Let's bring in our panel now with Gemma Tognini here on the desk with me from GT Communications and Caroline DeRusso, host of the Royal Report, 10 o'clock Sunday. She joins us from the sunny Perth. Great to talk to you again, Caroline. Let's talk matters domestic now. And um, before I hear from either of you, I just want, <laughs> want you to hear from that um, bloke we love to hear from on this program, that is the Climate and Energy Minister, Chris Bowen. Uh, have a listen again to what he said on ABC Radio this morning. We are in for a long, hot summer, Sabra. You can't avoid that, but you can prepare for it, uh, and we have been preparing for it. It's one of the impacts of climate change, of course. Uh, climate change is now a lived reality, and it means that longer, hotter summers are something we have to get more used to. Yeah, so we're going to have an even hotter summer, he says, because of climate change. It's just we won't have enough power to deal with it because of these policies that are supposed to stop climate change. It is nonsensical, isn't it? it it's... it's... From the outside looking in, it's this a person who believes something so vehemently that they don't even entertain the fact that they might be wrong. Yeah. And we all know those people in our personal and professional lives. The difference here is he's a minister employed by the people of Australia to whom he promised faithfully to lower the cost of living in terms of power prices. We've seen the opposite happen. In any which way you slice or dice it, this is a huge area of policy failure. And I, I should say, successive Australian governments over the past 10 years State and beyond... State, Liberal, Coalition and exactly, Labor. Exactly. Huge policy area of failure, area of policy failure, rather, for Australia. But the, the issue is that these are, the, these are the guys driving the bus at the moment. They mm. promised at the last election to do various things. Not just they, they, it's not that just they haven't delivered. They are continuing to dig us deeper into a hole. And like we've observed before, not looking to the rest of the world and saying with a sober mind, what can I learn here? What can we learn? Australia has the advantage of learning where other countries have failed. Why is the minister and the prime minister not taking that on board? It's so infuriating. Caroline, look, I know, you know, they would say, you know, sure, it's silly to talk about our policies changing the global climate. We're a part of international action and hopefully all of that will make things sweet and nice in the future. But the point is the lived reality. We, we know that global emissions are going up. China and other countries are doing nothing about this. So we are just hurting ourselves for no gain. It's not going to do anything for the environment, but it sure is going to make our electricity too expensive and not reliable enough. It is, and it's, but it's going to do wonders for the new household candle business I'm preparing to open, <laughs> uh, because that's what we'll all be. Uh, that's what we'll all be down to when we don't have enough power. What I loved um, a little bit later on in that statement, um, Chris Bowen says, "Well, he believes that the grid can cope." I'd love to know the basis of that belief. I would love to know the basis of that belief because successive summers have shown that we've got problems. Um, we're getting less supply coming in because you've got particularly this Labor government uh, putting their foot on the hose of more supply coming on. Close the Liddell power plant, which they said, no, that's not going to drive up prices because somehow magically, Chris, the law of economics no longer exists in New South Wales, where if you remove supply, nothing happens to the price when demand stays the same. And there's all these lovely broad brush comments. I love the idea of belief and preparation, yeah. but I really want to know what sits behind that. Exactly. I believe I won Wimbledon. It's belief, yeah. yeah. I, believe he's a, <laughs> I believe he's a crackpot. Hmm. Hey, uh, I want to talk about our work environment. We've talked before about a lot of people working from home, companies mm. finding it hard to get them back to the office. Many banks not going to bother. They're going to give everyone a four-day week. Have a look. 250 of the company's 4,000 employees will take part in the six-month trial. Staff will earn 100% of their wage for the same amount of work across four days instead of five. The objective is to really free up 20% of the times from people's days, really having fewer, shorter meetings, having other ways to connect with people or share updates. OK, is this efficient? Or is this, I mean, if, if they can get all their work done in four days, maybe they haven't been working hard enough. I think there's a lot of ways to slice and dice it. I've been employing people for 20 years and I think the, that uh, it's actually more likely to be successful in a smaller business where you can be way more in the weeds of the productivity and track these things. For a large organisation like Medibank, I think this is a death knell for productivity. I don't see how such a behemoth... And, look, they're a private company. They can do whatever they like. But I do not see how such a behemoth of an organisation is going to efficiently track 
and and measure and hold people to account in a way that's actually going to deliver results. In a firm like my own with a dozen people in it, it's very, very easy to see what works. And I've always been of the view, and hi to the team watching tonight, I've always been of the view, get the work done, deliver the results. If you do it efficiently, then take the... Like, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like that's, that is that is the beauty of being in an SME. Yeah, and it's a reward. But I, I agree with you. This is too big an organisation. They're going to be like a bureaucracy. And, and this is the worry, Caroline. As sure as eggs, if this gets embedded at any private companies... The state and federal public services will be in line for this uh, and we'll be getting even less out of them. And it will be the next in a long line of corporate fads. Remember <laughs> open plan oh, desks. Yes. Remember hot desking. Actually, it's such a shame that Joe Aston has left the AFR because I would love to read his obituary on hot desking. There have <laughs> been so many terrible corporate fads that have gone through and you 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 know once you've been once you've been in the corporate world 15 years or so you've you've generally seen them mm. of course medibank is working with the advocacy group for the four day week so of course it's they think it's a wonderful idea um, but like jem said the bigger the organisation, the more layers of management, the harder it is to, to measure that productivity. And um, Medibank, I think, are about to list. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens going forward. Oh, and yeah. How they, um, how, yeah, how, they, <laughs> how they're able to justify that because they also need to stay it. solvent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. They've just I've, disclosed yeah, it. Imagine if you're trying to take that to the market. I've got to say, as I threw to the break about this story, I did say... Uh, four-day week, um, wouldn't we all like a piece of that? And as I said that, I thought, aren't I on a four-day yeah, week? Yeah, but you work two <laughs> jobs, right? Yeah, you I work just two jobs. Point out, I know my show's only on <laughs> four nights a week, but I also write for The Australian. I also do, do documentaries. I'll show you tomorrow night what I've been working on in some of my spare time. But I do more than a four-day week. Now, let's get to Greta Thunberg because um, we never get tired of pointing out her silliness. Have a look at her tweet when it comes to the shocking situation in the Middle East. She, of course, has gone for some virtue signalling and tweeted, the world needs to speak up and call for an immediate ceasefire, justice and freedom for Palestinians and all civilians affected. This, in fact, of course, means these people calling for a ceasefire means Israel should just cop 1,400 people killed in the most atrocious circumstances and not hunt down the terrorists who did it. And Israel has responded through an official attack, uh, account saying Hamas doesn't use sustainable <laughs> materials for their rockets, which have butchered innocent Israelis. The victims of the Hamas massacre could have been your friends. Speak up. Well said. I mean, yeah. Greta's talking about... She cries about the people who might be affected by climate change in 100 years. Here are people slaughtered mm. and she doesn't want to stand up for them. The thing that I, when I saw this unfold, the thing that really struck me about this is that this is a young girl who has done nothing, and I just need to really reiterate this, she's famous for doing nothing other than sitting outside the... I think it was the Parliament building, right? So she's got... No credentials, no education. She's a professional activist from the edge, the, the age of, you know, a teenager. When I say no education, she's not a PhD. She hasn't done years of in-field study. She's simply a teenager who sat outside of parliament and was monetised, I should say, and, and, and taken advantage... I say taken advantage of from the outside in. That's what it looks like. But she's not a person with any authority to make that... No. And, and the media has created this person who says dumb stuff like that and I, I believe she deleted the tweet afterwards, right, saying, I was unaware. Well, you know what? Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. This is just a classic example of how stupid the media cycle can be. You platform people, you, you make them into something they're not. She was just a teenager who sat outside of Parliament and, and decided that she wanted no. to, you know... She's ruined she, the world with renewables. She's got nothing to say and no special insight None, or knowledge no on renewable energy, energy that's let alone on international affairs. Way more succinct affairs. than I was it's, just it's trying just, to say. It's just incredible. Mm. Let's move on from her though, because I want to ask about some other young women, and I better not have an opinion on this. You're one, allowed. Caroline. You're in a safe space, Chris. <laughs> uh, we're hearing that women from the age of 18 now in Australia are increasingly getting what we would call plastic surgery or, com uh, or cosmetic surgery. What, what, what is driving this? Is it just because it's freely available, cheap and easy and, and it's good stuff? Or is everyone trying to be an Instagram influencer? Look, 
I'm, I'm a little bit unhelpful to you here because I've never done any of this stuff. Like invest in a good moisturiser, drink lots of water, oh, get plenty of sleep. Stop. It's the absolute <laughs> best thing for you. Oh. It's absolutely the best thing for you. And Gemma knows that I can say that with a straight she face. She can, she can. Um, but she actually can. Um, this is actually really quite terrifying. Um, and a lot of these things, like particularly fillers, oh, well, the industry for starters is, is not regulated um, in any particular way. So uh, the, the way that it's advertised, God, who knows? <laughs> but a lot of these fillers, like you have to keep putting them in your face. The problem <laughs> is, is they don't break down. They just move around your face. So you need to keep pumping them into the areas. And that's why oh. they all end up looking like <laughs> blowfish in I, the air. Yeah. Can I just, I mean, can I just terrible. Yeah, we're just about out of time. Uh, very quickly, you one. don't live in the same house for 50 years without renovating. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and it's all about got... the quality of the tradespeople. No shame here. <laughs> we have got to come back to this topic another time. Thanks for joining us, Caroline. We'll see you Sunday night. <laughs> and Gemma Tonyuni. And just for the record, there's been no work done on my dial <laughs> yet. <laughs>